Amen and Amen. Amen. May be seated, please. Happy 4th of July. You have a good time? Oh, independence. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that God will also set us free again. And uh, I know that it's not only we celebrating the independence of our nation, but I pray that if any of us are still in bondage, God will deliver us today. Can I hear Amen. So, uh, how many of you had a good time yesterday? Some good time, some fireworks, some barbecues, some... Uh... <laughs> okay, praise the Lord. Today, I just want to share to you about my, uh, from my heart. I want to share to you from my heart. So, uh, maybe I, I will not preach like I usually preach, but I, I just want to talk to you. I just want to talk to you um, from my heart. Is that okay? And uh, if you remember several weeks ago, I shared to you about when God seems silent, when God seems distance away, when you pray and uh, you feel like God is millions of miles away and God seems silent. And that word seems silent, that, that word seems is very important because actually God never silent. It is us, it is us who usually we do not listen. In the book of Job, Job said that God speaks in many different ways, but men do not perceive it. So how can God be silent? God, God never silent. God is the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So how can the Word not speak? It's the Word. It's the Word. So the Word will not be short of Word. Hope you get it. <laughs> he is the Word. He is the Word. So he, he never lacks of Word. And uh, I learned as I'm going to continue the message, the series about prayers. I picture it this way. The disciples, the disciples, they were with Jesus. They were with Jesus day in, day out. They were with Jesus in the morning. In the morning when they woke up, they looked for Jesus and Jesus wasn't there. So they talked to each other and uh, they said, where is Jesus? We, oh, oh. And uh, they looked for, for Jesus and uh, they saw Jesus was alone, praying. And uh, at night, you know, after they uh, traveled, they ministered and they were tired and uh, they rested. And probably one or, one or two of the disciples, they were uh, awakened and uh, they found out that Jesus wasn't there. So they asked, hey, where is Jesus? Where is Jesus? Oh, they found out that Jesus was praying. So they, they didn't know, you know, what, uh, how he prayed. But what they noticed was during the daytime, <laughs> during the daytime, miracles happened. Miracles happen. Jesus heals the sick. He healed the sick. And he multiplied bread. He multiplied fish. And he cast out demons. And uh, so when they went back to their resting place again, and they found out that Jesus was praying. So they saw all these, these miracles, these healings, this multiplication, these unusual things, these powerful things, these heavenly things, and, and the disciples couldn't, couldn't hold it, but they, they, they questioned in their mind, what, what happened? What happened? How can all these things happen? And uh, all we watched was uh, many times Jesus was alone. So uh, the disciples, the disciples did not ask Jesus how to heal the sick. Can you teach us how to heal the sick? Can you teach us how to multiply bread and multiply fish 
No, the disciples never asked Jesus to teach how to cast out demons. No, the disciples asked Jesus, can you teach us how to pray? Apparently, they knew the secret that it was in his time alone with the Father that he experienced the union intimacy with the Father and the rest of the day is miracles, signs and wonders, powerful things happen. And that is why the disciples ask Jesus, can you teach us how to pray? Can you teach us how to pray? And um, in the book of Matthew chapter 26 verse 40, it says, this is when Jesus was about to be crucified when he was in Golgotha. Then Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? What? Could you not watch with me for one hour? Can you use the New King James translation, please? So that I can read it from, the, uh, from my same, same notes that I have here. So when Jesus came to his the disciples, he found them sleeping, and Jesus was, was surprised. And it says, what? Can you say, what? what? Say that again. Can you, can you sound a little bit frustrated? <laughs> Here is this, uh, Jesus was, was praying, you know, and uh, what? And then he asked, could you not watch with me one hour? One hour. Why do we need to pray for one hour? Why? Have you ever wondered why? It says in verse 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. The spirit wants to obey, but the flesh, this flesh is weak. So we need to pray for at least one hour. Pray for one hour because when we pray for one hour, I believe we can, we can subdue our mind. We can calm our mind. We can, we can subdue our flesh because we, many times when, when, when I pray, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm disturbed by my cell phone, by, by text, you know, by WhatsApp, by whatever, you know. So I, I put my cell phone away. I put my cell phone away and I, I want to be alone with him and but even when my cell phone was away you know my mind still somewhere else so I take time to pray and I take time to worship I just worship and worship and worship and and then I can pray and even when I pray sometimes I don't know how to pray when I pray sometimes I'm short of words what else to pray God so when I pray I take the Bible I pray with the word of God and I remember what Glenn preached last Sunday. There are times that we don't know what to pray and he quoted from Romans chapter 8 and I will read it to you again. And it, this is the, uh, Paul the Apostle when, when, when uh, he wrote this. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us, helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. I'm encouraged, I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged when the apostle himself said, when the apostle Paul said, I, we don't know how to pray. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. The Spirit, the Spirit, it is not only pray from our head, not only pray with our words, but pray from our hearts. It's just spontaneous. Maybe it's a short prayer. It's okay. But begin with the word of God and you personalize the word of God when you pray and you ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit and you can pray with the with the language, with the new language, speaking in tongue, and you use it. Let me ask you, how many of you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and you speak with the new language? Let me see your hands. The second question, how many of you use it? 
Because sometimes, sometimes you, you, um, you have it, but you don't use it. You don't practice it. And I want to encourage all of you. And if you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, I will build up in the message again. And even when Glenn preaches again, the next couple of weeks, he will continue again. And I pray, my prayer is, my prayer is that we will become a church that is called a church that prays. A praying church, a house of prayer. I would, I, I, I want our church to be called, the, the, to be known as the church who pray, pray. Oh yes, Lord Jesus. So I am encouraged again when the greatest apostle who wrote uh, most of the New Testament, when he said that we don't know how to pray. I am encouraged. So hey, if you still don't know how to pray. Be encouraged. We can use the word of God and I'll, I'll continue. I'll continue again what I've built up in the, in, the, in, in the past couple of weeks that all of you know how to pray. All of you know how to pray. We need to pray more. Even in this season, we ought to pray more than before. We need to pray more than before. This is the time when we need to spend more time with the Lord. This is the time that, you know, the world is not getting better. And uh, last week I wasn't here. I was in Fresno. We ministered at our Fresno City Blessing Church. And um, so um, when I heard, when I heard about the... uh, Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriage. My heart broke. My heart broke. That's why I said what I said earlier. I just want to talk to you. I want to share to you from my heart. My heart broke. Uh, actually, um, perhaps this is one of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the message that really took me. You know, I, I, I was... I, I, prayed and I again I I prayed again spent time with the Lord again I I I felt like this is the one of those times when it, it was kind of kind of uh, not easy for me to 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 share this why because of the challenges of the spirit that is in this nation and the world so my heart broke I I, I was sad and uh, I called Bishop, talked to Bishop Bart Pierce, my spiritual father, and I, I communicated with him, and I seek guidance from him, what, what, what should we do and, uh, as, as a church? And I got counsel from him, and uh, he sent me his message, his notes, and I want to share to you that um, um, actually, this is the time for all of us, the body of Christ, we need to humble ourselves and seek God and pray. Amen? It's not the time for us to point fingers. No, not at all. And please allow me to share my heart and what I experience. And uh, I pray that your eyes will be open. And uh, I learned that um, many people today when they are trying to define what is the greatest threat to our nation. They said, some of them said, um, global warming. How many of you um, heard the news, when was that? Before 4th of July on, on Friday, uh, that America, uh, the, America is in the highest alert all over the nation, right? So, um, it is a serious time, a se- serious time. Even in Medicine Square alone, they dispatch like about 7,000 um, policemen or something. It's, it's a serious, serious thing. And uh, when, when people are asked, what is the, uh, the greatest threat to our nation? Some people say it's global warming. Why? Because they said that the, the earth is getting warmer and warmer, but actually... Um, that theory is not right. They have to twist and falsify data to hold their view as truths. 
the whole scientific community agrees that we have now entered a period of cooling of the earth. Wow, that may, this may surprise some of you. But that is what happened. And some people, when they are asked, what is the greatest threat in our nation right now? Some say that it's ISIS. There's no doubt that since 9-11, we, as well as every nation in the world, have become targets for crazy extremists. And, uh, but actually, um, Russia... Russia is more of a threat than ISIS. Why did I say that? Because uh, I learned from Bishop that uh, just by sheer power, numbers and technological capabilities, and of course, prophetic words mentioned in the scripture that the bear is coming from the north. So actually, um, Russia could be a bigger threat. But if I ask you, what is the biggest threat in our nation today? I believe the greatest threat is not from the outside, but from within. The greatest threat is in our mind. The battle, the battle to control our minds. The battle to control what is in between our ears. The battle that we are fighting, um, it's, it's, uh, the stakes is infinitely high, very, very high. There is a war going on, and the war is how we can control our minds. So actually, it's, it's between our ears that this is the greatest threat, the greatest threat. And... Um, I want you to read Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Let's read from the New King James translation first. And then I want to read from the Amplified translation. I'm going to take it slowly now. And I want, I'm not going to be in a hurry. But I'm not going to be too long. I just want to hit the point so that we can be prepared and we can have a strong prayer life. But we cannot Ignore the facts, what is happening in America right now. Okay. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Let's read from the Amplified Translation. The Amplified Translation says, same verse, okay? See to it that no one carries you off as spoil or make you yourself captive by so-called, what? Philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit. Idle fancies and plain nonsense. This is not me talking. This is the word of God. Following human tradition, which is man's ideas of the material rather than spiritual world. Just crude notions following rudimentary and elemental teaching of the universe and disregarding the teaching of Christ the Messiah. There is a stronghold and the satanic stronghold is over many countries and many communities. There are strongholds that, that influence countries, communities, and, and churches. Churches? Yes. Sadly, yes. And also individuals. And wherever a stronghold exists, it is a demonically induced pattern of thinking. When the stronghold exists, then our way of thinking can be influenced by the demonic forces. A house made of demonic thoughts become a dwelling place for satanic activity. And, and this 
verse talk about philosophy. What is philosophy? Philosophy is not just a subject or department in a college or university. No, it is something everyone has and it is a lens through which we view the world and make decisions. So what is philosophy? Basically, philosophy is a set of belief. It's a set of belief, ideas, and values by which we live. And the word of God is so clear here. It's so clear here. As Christians, our philosophy must be modeled by Jesus. Our philosophy, our belief system, the way we think, our belief system. That's why when, when, when the Holy Spirit cleanses us, when we come to Jesus, the testimony like, like Amanda shared just now, when she went to the mega camp retreat, she was delivered. She cried, God touched him, the Holy Spirit touched him. And not only that, not only that the house was cleansed, not only that she was set free, not only that, but she was filled with the Holy Spirit and she continues seeking the Lord. That is how she can have an overcoming life even until today. And so the same with us. We need to do the same. Not only that we, we come to the altar and we're being prayed for and we, we, we are set free and, and, and we, we, we feel we are, we, are, uh, 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 we, are, we are so free now, but you don't fill yourself or your mind with the word of God. The Bible says, this is Satan talking. When Satan saw that the house is clean, in order, but empty, he will come back with his seven other friends and that person's condition will be worse. So when we are being set free, how can we, how can we be... Uh, how can we continue to be set free? Spend time in the word, my friends. Spend time in the word. This is an old school, but this will surely bring you to victory for the rest of your life. Not only weekly, not only monthly, not only yearly, but for the rest of your life. Stick with the word of God. Hallelujah. And uh, so, as Christians, our philosophy must be modeled by Jesus, not by the world's tradition. Not because somebody said so, because uh, the, uh, um, most people believe in certain things and you just follow the crowd. Just because your friends in campus, in class, you know, pressured you, you just follow the crowd. Again, I say this with broken heart, but I want to equip the church to be strong. We need to follow the philosophy of Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen. Solid amen. amen. Hallelujah. And um, talking about the Supreme Court ruling, let's check what the Bible said. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. You can put it in the New King James Version now, Nathan. This is, the context is about the, uh, the end time. The context is about the end of the age. The context here is about the Antichrist. The Antichrist, Antichrist means against Christ, against Christ, Antichrist. And uh, it says here, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High. Are you saints? It says, the Antichrist will persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend to change times and what? To change times and laws. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and a time and a half time. It's uh, three and a half years. The saints shall be given into his hand. 
Oh, sounds discouraging. The saints will be given to them for three and a half years. And, um, but don't be discouraged. Keep on reading from uh, to, to verse 26 and 27. But the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, to the saints of the Most High. That is after three and a half years. So don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. His kingdom is everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. And this is what happened. And with, with uh, what is happening in America today, I, I believe that America is entering to uh, persecution right now. The church is entering to persecution. And uh, this is not to, to scare you, this is to prepare you. This is to prepare us, that we need to be equipped, we need to be prepared. And it, it, it says here that the, the, the intent of the Antichrist is to change laws. Do you know that the Supreme Court were never given the right to make laws? They never were given right to make laws or to change laws. They are their right is to uphold constitution. If there should be any change, they have to go through Congress. Can you see the fulfillment of this verse? Could it be? Well, this should not be a question, but this is the fulfillment of what Daniel 7 was talking about. Oh, Jesus. There exists a ruler of darkness, a principality of the deadliest order that has been tolerated by believers for so long that its influence is considered normal for the church. I hope you get that. So if some of you have compromised or compromised so long that the demonic forces will influence your life, the way you think, your philosophy, your belief system, the way you think, and it is considered normal, even for the people that have been going to church for quite some time. It's sad. I pray that none of you are like that. I pray that this is the time when we really seek the Lord and pray. Not to point fingers. Again, not to point fingers, but to pray and to demonstrate love. So... The Antichrist has to attack the philosophy of the church. It's already made its way into much of the mainstream denomination, denominational church where it's, it's, it joined the church philosophy with the world and accepted the whole LGBT lie. That it needs equality, equal rights, etc. That is a lie. I want you to hear the voice of God, the word of God, and I pray that you know we, we never enter this season this this season before in, in the history. Never. Never. Is it easy? It's not easy. Do I have all the answer? Probably not. Because some of the things that you will face, that we will face, sometimes you, you will be faced with, with questions that you cannot answer. But even if you cannot answer, I know the Holy Spirit will guide you how to behave. Hear me. Oh, God loves all people. God loves you. God loves, you know, even, even when I say this, I have, I have to be careful because of some philosophies. Even when I say things like, like, like what I'm going to say, people may under, misunderstood me. 
But Jesus loves sinners. Can I say that? Can I say that Jesus also loves those people that support LGBT? But do you know that the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that uh, it, God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked will turn from their wicked ways and be saved. God cannot compromise. And I pray that we should not compromise. And uh, I have some of my friends at the gym, they are openly gay. Let me be blunt. I know I'm on video. I learned, and I'm going to share two of my experience with you. This is true. This is life experience. I, I, uh, when I saw, uh, the first example, when I saw this man, I, I'm, you know, um, I don't know how to react. I don't know how to behave. I, you know, so, so uh, the easiest way is to avoid. And, uh, but from time to time, when I go to the gym, I, I, I meet him again. And uh, so I, I, I'm nice to him, but I avoid him. The next time, you know, day after day, week after weeks, I meet with him again, and uh, I, I was nice. I, I greeted him. I, I, I called him by name. He knows my name, and, uh, but, but I avoided him. After about, I don't remember, probably about three weeks, when I met him at the gym, he came to me, and he was so excited. His, his face was so, so bright, you know. He was so excited. He came to me and said, Paul, you know what? Uh, what? Yesterday, one of my friends took me to church, and I received Jesus Yesterday, this is the happiest time in my life. Can you believe it? That's what he said to me. I repented. I want you to hear my heart. I was so ashamed of myself. Why didn't I share Jesus to him? Why I avoid him? And he said it. I'm free now. I learned my lesson well. And the second testimony that I want to share to you, actually, two of my friends are planning to come in the service, and I, I, I wish they are here. They can testify. And uh, my other friends at the gym also, you know that they are openly gay. And uh, they, they're, they're, they, 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 they uh, show their affection openly. And they were big, muscular. And uh, this time, I did not avoid them. I befriend them. I became their friend. I don't compromise, but I befriend them. I know my limit, but I, I, I befriend them. I become their friends. And uh, one day, when I walked to the gym, I saw this man. He was once big. He shrank. And I, 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 I called him. Um, what happened? call his name and then he said I've been sick suddenly you know I felt like compassion and uh, my friends who were supposed to come uh, in the service said to him and to me how about if we pray for then he mentioned his name sure and then we prayed and we prayed like the football pray player prayed you know uh, no, 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 not pray, but uh, huddle. What do you call that? <laughs> we pray like that. <laughs> so I prayed for him. 
I prayed God's mercy. I prayed for God's healing. I prayed for God's love. I prayed, and I, I prayed a long prayer for him. When I said amen, tears coming out from his eyes. And he said, he looked at me in the eye and he said, thank you. That really means a lot for me. I hug him. He also hugged my friend. And that day, he thanked me like probably 10 times. He thanked me, he thanked me. Even before he left, he already took shower and uh, changed. And uh, before he left, he looked for me. I was at the back of the gym. And then he said, I'm leaving now. Thank you again for your prayers. That really means a lot to me. I want you to hear my heart. We are, when I say we are here not to condemn, not to point fingers, but how can we love with no compromise? How can we really, really, <laughs> we need to have the wisdom of God. How can we get the wisdom of God if we don't pray? How can we pray if we don't know the word of God? How can we pray the biblical prayer? The safest way for us to pray is to pray what is already written in the Bible. One of the, one of the uh, uh, prayers that I use is, is from the book of Ephesians. Uh, it says here, Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So in the last several days, I've been praying this prayer. I've been praying this scripture. I use this scripture to, to pray, Lord God, Lord, I pray that you give me the spirit of wisdom. When people ask me, and, and I don't have the answer, Lord, give me the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. So I pray, Lord, open my eyes, open my eyes, Lord, that I can understand so that there is no gap, there is no wall, there is nothing that I, 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 I didn't understand, I, I, many things that I, I didn't understand, but the Lord revealed to me, the Lord will do the same to you. Oh, Jesus. And uh, so, again, we need to pray more than, than, we, than before. And uh, as we continue the series on prayer, I want to continue from the, uh, the Lord's Prayer in the book of Matthew chapter 6. But actually, it is not the Lord's Prayer. It is the disciples' prayer. It is the disciples' prayer. And prayer is, is exciting. As I prepared this message, the Lord brought me to the experience um, some 35 years ago when I was still in college. When we have roommates and we made commitments. I was, I was 20, 21 years old, and we, uh, we made a commitment to pray every day at 6 o'clock in the morning. So whoever, whoever woke up first, you know, hey, come on, come on, let's, let's pray. It's, it's easier to wake up in the morning during summer. But uh, during winter time, you know, you, you wake up, it's cold, you know, so we, we have made agreement in, in, uh, in, in, in the, uh, our apartments, you know, we, we are going to pray, not in our room, we are going to pray in the, in the uh, living room. So sometimes, uh, you know, during winter, most of the time, we, we, we bring our blanket along and we pray, and we pray, and we encourage one another. Sometimes, some of us, even sometimes, I, I fell asleep and my roommate woke me up oh, you know okay and so we we sing we we start with singing and i remember i still remember as if it was yesterday one of my roommates you know at that time uh, one of the songs that we used to sing was 
Holy Spirit, come. You know, it was a very nice song, a very nice worship song. And then as we, we were tired. We were so sleepy. It was cold. And then one of my roommates, you know, he sang so loud, you know. And then this is what he said. Make, make my ears to speak. Then <laughs> Speak. Then we were, we were something is not right here, you know. <laughs> Make my mouth to see, you know. And uh, he was he was so serious. And then uh, when we realized, you know, of course we were praying, you know. So we we, we want to be uh, courteous, you know. We, we we don't want to laugh like you, you know. <laughs> So, so, but we couldn't, we couldn't hold it. We laugh, we laugh. Ah, can you imagine your ears speak, you know? <laughs> your mouth see, you know? So, ah, so we had a good time. That was our experience. But it was 35 years ago. It was good. So prayer is for everyone. And uh, the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer, it says here that, uh, okay, our Father who art in heaven, our Father who art in heaven, when you pray, be specific to who you are praying to. Be specific. Some people pray to, to the universe. Some people pray to their ancestor. You don't pray to your ancestor. You don't want to wake them up. You pray to our heavenly Father. Pray to our Heavenly Father, our Father. Our Father is on the basis of who He is and who He is to me, who He is to us. I am related to Him. We are related to Him. And when we say our Father, our Father is not only my Father, it's our Father. So I cannot pray only for me. I pray for you. I encourage you. I embrace you. I am with you, with you. Can you look at your neighbor and say it's with you? Yes. Tell, tell, tell your neighbor it's with you. We we pray with you. We, you, you, you are included. I reach out to you. Oh, Jesus. So when, when, we, when, we, when the disciples said, pray, uh, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, pray in this manner. Pray in this order. We need to understand that, hey, our Father, our Father is not only reaching heaven, but it's not only vertical, but also horizontal. And... Uh, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father, our Father. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. When I travel, when I travel to the East Coast, um, when I have gathering among leaders, pastors, bishops, uh, apostles, pastors, they call me apostle. Apostle, when I go somewhere else, some people call me Reverend, Reverend Tan. Some people call me Dr. Tan. When I go to Europe, some people call me Sir. And uh, over here, you call me Pastor. But my children don't call me Pastor. My children don't call me Apostle. My children call me daddy. When you call, when we call our God, it's our daddy. Bypass all those, those titles, you know. We have intimate relationship. We have intimate relationship. Lord, you are my, you are my father. You are our father. Hallowed be your name. And let me, let me stop right here. This is, this is so powerful. This is so powerful when, when it says, hallowed be your name, your name, God's name. God's name is so powerful. God's name. When you, when you pray and you use this, this prayer as a model, you pray, Lord, you, you are our father. The, the, the intimacy, you, you, you can click right away. Hallowed be your name. Lord, your name is so great. Your name, you, your name is above all names. Above all names that is mentioned in this age and in this age to come. Your name is so powerful. Demons tremble in your name. I remember even uh, uh, several months after 
after I received Jesus, you know, um, my, my roommates and I, we cast out demons from this, 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 uh, one of our friends. Uh, some of you may think, oh, in, in America, there is no demon. Who says? Only in Indonesia, there is no, 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 everywhere there, there is demon. And, and, and when we pray in the name of Jesus, we saw it in, in our own eyes. We witnessed it. And we were just a bunch of students. I was not a pastor. I, I was 20, 21 years old. And we just practiced the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we command this demon to leave this body. And boom, that person was set free. Wow. That name is so powerful. So when we pray, Lord, your name, Lord, you are, you are my deliverer. You can set me free. You can deliver me. Lord God, you are my healer. Lord, I thank you. Your name is so powerful. You are the one that gives me hope. Oh, no, nobody, no situation, no circumstance can take away my hope. Lord, I thank you for Christ is in me, is the hope of glory. You know, even when you begin to, 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 to acknowledge that, it's like some, something lift up in your spirit. You are not the same anymore by confessing, by saying, by declaring his name. His name above all names. And when we, when we uh, pray, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, we, we, we enter his gate with thanksgiving. We enter his court with praise. So don't complain. When we pray, you know, don't just complain. Oh, 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 oh God, I'm, 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 I'm so, so, so burdened. Stop it. Give thanks. You may be in challenges now, but give thanks. Lord, I, give, I thank you, Lord, for you are good to me. I can still breathe now. Lord, I thank you that I can eat now. Lord, I thank you I have, I have place to stay. I have a car. Oh, Lord, I thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the family. Thank you for the friends. Thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you. You are so good to me. There are so many things that we can give thanks to Jesus. Don't complain. Just stop and then praise him. Praise Him. Praise Him. There is no way you can see your God in the proper context of who He is and still be intimidated by your conflict. The reason why you see your conflict seems so large and swelling is you haven't rehearsed in your own ears who your God is to you. Rehearse who your God is to you. God, you are my God. You are my God. So you, you, you begin to pray. You, begin, you, you, you start with, I, I hope by now, you can, you can begin to pray for at least half an hour. How many of you in this series of prayer, you, 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 can, you can testify that your prayer life has grown? Let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. M M music team, can you please come forward, please? The name of Jesus is so good. I, I remember I read an article just, just several days ago, several days ago, that the Supreme Court in uh, Oklahoma, they made a decision to remove the, uh, the monument of the Ten Commandments. Well, this is not new. This happened in Baltimore many years ago. They asked the Ten Commandments monument to be removed. Then I remember this. Psalms chapter 2. Why do the nation... Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. It says, He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. God just laughs. God laughs 
at them, you know. And uh, the Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress, distress them in his deep displeasure. You know, let me close with this. God says, why nations are in rage? God is so powerful. I read in the book of Exodus. How many of you heard the story that God dried the Red Sea so that the people of Israel can cross over? You know how he did it? The Bible says he did it by the blast of his nostrils. It is effortless. Just in case if some of you still don't get it, if I give you a piece of paper and then I ask you to blow it, you know, you may be able to blow it with your mouth. <laughs> but try it with your nostril. Just try. <laughs> no power. <laughs> That's what God said. That's how God dried the Red Sea. By the blast of his nostril. That's how powerful our God is. If God is with you, who can be against you? No one. No one. So, let's build this, this prayer life. I'll continue again next week. But be strong and learn to, to be loving. Love God, love people. It's easy to quote. It's not easy to... <laughs> Sometimes I don't love people. Pastor Paul, yes. <laughs> Sometimes I don't love people. Oh, you know. <laughs> but oh God, okay, forgive me. Let's stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, I want you all to go home with this, with this picture in your mind. When God dry up the Red Sea with the blast from his nostril, you know that you are serving a powerful God. It's so powerful, so powerful, so powerful. He will give you wisdom. He will give you revelation. He will, he will give you what you need in, 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 at the right time, at the right place. And love will overflow. Perfect love casts out fear. Even I remember when I went to Surabaya with Ibu Hana, you, you ministered to those people too. You ministered to the, uh, the tra transvestite people. And uh, she, she hugged those people. She just minister to them. It says, oh my God, perfect love cast out fear. Oh Lord, I thank you for your people. I thank you every week, oh God. Every week we come to be taught and encouraged by your word. I pray, Lord Jesus, you seal, seal our minds, seal our atmosphere. Come on now. Seal our minds, our way of thinking, our philosophy, our philosophy that we should not be carried away by the world view, but by the biblical view. We know, O oh God, that your word says that marriage is between a man and a woman. And Lord, that is the value that you have put in, in, in our lives, to God, that we can, we can have strong families, O oh God. Lord, we thank you. As we go home, oh God, you bless us, you equip us, and let your love, your love flow in us and through us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless your people. Bless everyone. Bless every family. Bless every student, married couple, or single. Bless their work, their school, their businesses. Bless them abundantly for your glory, oh God. For your glory, oh God. And Lord, help us to be strong in the time of challenge and let there be no fear because perfect love casts out fear. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you.